She had a wild child reputation Damn near burned the town down Out of graduation That black and white front page Might fade but the memory remains They say she's headed for damnation Only thing to do around here Was talk about salvation We go anywhere they stop and stare But we don't care They say she's Okay, if you're just tuning in, this is www.arkansashowcaseradio.com show, and we have an interview for you today. It's so exciting, because what's your favorite alcohol, Roy? Is it beer? Is it wine? What is it? Brandy. Oh, oh that's yeah. Good. We're oh, that's to... pretty clever there. It's not brandy. But we have Elliot. He's coming on. He's uh, the guy who wrote it and lead singer for Looking Glass. I know. It. We're going to hear all about where inspiration for the song came from yeah and, and then just think that is the the theme for the show guardian of the galaxy part two kurt russell said that was the best song brandy was the best song ever written it's one of the best songs ever written of any genre of any time i sing it like 50 times every single day i'm just gonna sing it to mr elliot when he calls us but i only sing it when i'm naked <laughs> I'd rather you be naked than have on your... What the hell are you wearing? This? Ah, oh, I found this. My wife went through some of the old clothes. And this was my softball uh, jersey from about 25 years ago when I played for the Usafe Cads out here on the base. The who's? You save cads. Combat <laughs> Aerial Delivery save School. You cats? I save cats and then I eat them. <laughs> oh, I do eat them. They're damn good at eating, boy. Oh, I've eaten some cats in college. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, those are called hookers. <laughs> but, but yeah, Elliot's going to be calling up here any minute, and then we're going to have a good discussion with him. Man, this guy did a lot, man. He did scores for... Uh, uh, 20th Century Fox. Yeah, he was in charge of the music division of 20, 20th Century Fox. Yeah, that's a good thing, because it only had really one hit song. Yeah, but man, he did uh, the score for like Night at the Roxbury. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because that's known for its soundtrack. I, I, well, John Travolta, <laughs> he, he was on the Saturday, uh, Saturday, Night, uh, Saturday Night Fever Part 3. Yeah, and he or, did is it, it Part 3 or Part 2? Jamie Lee Curtis. In perfect, yeah. him and John Travolta, and in all kinds of movies. Yeah, so I mean, cool. he had a great career. At, he really had a better career to me after Looking Glass. He saw it through the Looking Glass. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped right through there. <laughs> He's Alice in Wonderland. What do you think about that, Alice? But so stay tuned. We're just waiting for him to call it's in. So any, exciting, any second. so brand Because I, I had a hard time when he said, "Yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to." West time zone. I'm like, West time zone? What is that for, cowboys? And uh, <laughs> Everything is high It confused me. I have a damn master's degree from Arkansas, and that's why, I guess, because I said, Western is cowboys? What the hell is it? So I had to go to Google and specific time zone. <laughs> high West noon. Coast. High noon and two bits. Yeah. That's all you yeah. need to know about Western. So I'm like, what the hell is a West time zone? I had never heard of that. But it's West Coast, that's what he said, Pacific time zone. So it'll be coming up shortly. So stay tuned. Should be a lot of fun. And we'll fill you in on all the details by Mr. Elliot as he lets us know why Because we really about can't Brandy. pronounce his last name. That's Laurie. what we're just calling it. Lori? Lori. Like Peter Lori? Yes. But his name's Elliot. Remember Peter Lori? Remember that actor? Yeah. Yeah, with the uh, Maltese Falcon. And E.T.? He wasn't the damn, damn E.T. <laughs> that wasn't Peter Lorre. It was a Muppet. <laughs> so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay. Hello? Hey, is that Roy? Yeah. What's up, Elliot? How are you? Man, we've been waiting for this interview. I tell you, this... <laughs> that's one of the... I tell you, once you get that song in your head, Brandy... I mean, you had to yeah. go through therapy. <laughs> it's like an earworm. Thanks, Elliot. Appreciate it. I'm sorry for keeping you up at night. <laughs> <laughs> so what was what, 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 COVID-19 got you all down and everything? You can't do any concerts or anything? Yeah. 
all the shows were canceled, and uh, we live out of here in L.A., and stuff is locked down pretty tight. Um, I mean, you know, you can, you can get out and about and do your errands and stuff, but um, you can't eat indoors at a, at a restaurant or anything, and, you know, you certainly can't go to a show or have a show, so it's just kind of tough. It's tough all over. So are you doing any kind of Zoom concerts or anything like that? Are you out there, you know, doing any kind of music nah. right now? I'm not. I'm not doing any of that virtual stuff. I'm just, uh, you know, I got stuff booked for uh, for next year. When hopefully this stuff is over and done with, and we can get back to real life again. Now, when going back to your song, Brandy. Now, with Looking Glass, you guys came from New Jersey, right? Well, uh, the band got together in New Jersey. Three of the four of us were uh, students at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and another one of the guys went to a nearby uh, college. Uh, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, but the rest of the guys were from New Jersey, and we got together out there. So now, do you still follow Rutgers sports or anything of that nature? <laughs> I do occasionally. You know, but since they became a member of the Big Ten, they're so horrible. You know, I mean, they can't, <laughs> they can't compete with those Big Ten teams. So, uh, well, they can compete with <laughs> they can compete with the SEC teams like Arkansas as they beat us a couple of years ago. Rutgers beat Arkansas. Yeah, that must have been a bad year. Must have been a bad year for you guys. Elliot, a couple of years ago, anybody could beat Arkansas. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do watch their games every once in a while. Their basketball team is pretty good. I I'm not as big a basketball fan as I am a football team. Their basketball spot is pretty good. Now, now, when you were back, we'll go back to, you know, we like Rutgers and everything, but when you go back to Looking Glass, how did you guys get formed? How did we come together? Y yes, sir. Yeah, well, like I say, three of the four of us were students at Rutgers, and, uh, you know, after I was there for about a year, I started to find a couple other guys there who were musicians, and, you know, the band went through a couple of changes. The, the, the four guys who made the record weren't, uh, the original four guys that got together, or, or, or the same four guys, we you know had guys come in and out and in and out. But uh, finally, uh, we wound up with uh, with three of the guys that you know I just sort of met on campus, and musicians gravitated towards each other, and um, we found a lot of places to play on campus because we played a lot of uh, fraternity parties and local bars and stuff. So it was a good place to. Put to put a band together. So now, what was the main reason to start the band? Was it like to make your music heard, or was it just to pick up chicks? Come on, tell the truth. Well, no. <laughs> well, I think it served both purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've, been, I've been playing music uh, professionally since I was 14, 15 years old, so I definitely wanted to have some kind of band while I was in college. and. Uh, uh, we were a cover band, you know, we would play five, six sets a night, whether it was at a bar or at a fraternity party, and we would play whatever was, you know, popular in the day, everything from uh, from Motown to the Rolling Stones, and after a while, we started writing our own material, and we would sneak the songs into the set, so, you know, in the fifth set at a bar, when, like, everybody was either drunk or gone home, we'd, we'd sneak in a couple of, we could sneak in a couple of our original songs and see how they did, you know. Now, when Brandy came out, how did that come about? Because, you know, I mean, that was a big hit. Well, the, the band that, that was together at Rutgers, when we graduated uh, from there, we, we, we had a pretty good local following, and we said, you know, let's give this a minute before we go get real jobs and, uh, and see if we can do something with this. So we rented a, a farmhouse out in the northwest corner of New Jersey, which is almost like Pennsylvania. It's woodsy and it's got pine trees and very uh, very kind of bucolic and, and country. And we, we, we would shed it out there. We would play gigs on the weekends and we would uh, write songs and record demos during the week. Uh, and we finally managed to get our demo to a manager and that manager liked us enough to take us to uh, Clive Davis at Epic Records, and oh, wow. he liked what he heard on the on the demo tape, and he had us come into New York City. I was only about an hour, fifteen minute drive from where we were. We went in and we did a showcase uh, show for him, 
and he liked them up to sign us up. Man, so do you remember where you were the first time that you heard Brandy on the radio? You know, I don't remember the first time I heard Brandy on the radio. I remember the first time I heard Looking Glass on the radio because there was a local station uh, out where we were in uh, in the country in New Jersey, and we would call them every five minutes, and our friends would call them every five <laughs> minutes and ask them to play one of the songs from our <laughs> album. And when they, the first time I heard it, I was on one of these country roads, and I just pulled over to the side and turned the radio way up and, and, and left it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what were you driving? What was I driving then? Yeah. I had a 1965 Chevy Super Sport and Power Convertible. Wow, <laughs> man. <laughs> you were living a life way back then. <laughs> Tahitian turquoise with a white interior and a white top. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't tell people that. <laughs> now, of course, everybody, because of that song and you know, all the soundtracks, know the group No Looking Glass. But where did the name come from? I th think that's actually kind of a cool little story that you have. Uh, to tell you the honest truth, we were, we were probably sitting in that Super Sport convertible and uh, had probably imbibed something or another that, that got us a little off kilter and we were looking <laughs> for a name. And I think somebody looked in the rearview mirror and said, what about mirrors? And <laughs> we said, well, the mirrors, that's what they're good. What's another name for mirror? And that's, that's how we came up on looking glass. I'm oh, glad, wow. you, glad you didn't see a homeless person peeing somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Let's call him Frank. <laughs> <laughs> now, what? Um, obviously, you've had that as a huge song. Are you doing any new music right now? Are you writing for anybody else? Uh, you know, are you kind of getting I, back into touring at all? I, I still do write and re and record. I don't know. Have you guys uh, have you guys seen the acapella version that's up on YouTube? Brandy, have you seen that? I saw that. And, and I'm sorry. I saw that, and you got such a unique voice. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, well, I I, I always say that that I'm lucky because I was a baritone, and I never had any high notes to begin with, so I didn't lose them as I got older. <laughs> I never had but uh, yeah, so that kind of, yeah, I mean, I did that, but I, yeah, I also do write and record some things occasionally. Uh, if you look on my YouTube channel or if you look on Spotify under my name, under Elliot Lurie, you'll find, you'll find a few newer things. There's, there's some newer things up there. Now, what was it like when uh, uh, it appeared on the soundtrack for Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2? And Kurt Russell says oh, the best song ever. Well, that, that was great. When I, you know, it, the, the first movie was not the kind of movie that I would normally, you know, seek out, but I had heard so many good things about it that I checked out the first movie, and it was so great, and the way he used that 70s music was so fantastic. I was actually a little jealous that they hadn't used my song in the first movie, and then um, I got a, uh, an email from my, from my publisher uh, about you know, a year before the second movie came out, they said they want to use your song in the second movie. I said, fantastic, I love the movie, it's going to be a big hit, so let's do it. And then they sent me the script pages, and I said, well, wow, this, this is not just like a little background cue, this is like part of the story. It's uh, So I, I loved it, and, uh, you know, I loved both movies. I got to, uh, to know the director, James Gunn, a little bit, and, uh, the, you know, it was really a blessing. I was, I was super, super happy about it. That's amazing. I mean, it's a great song, great movie. Uh, there, now, there's some rumors out there that you're starting to put out a new album, but it's going to be like gangster rap. Is, is there any truth to that rumor? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're pulling my leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be Grandmaster Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen. <laughs> now, do you still get together with the uh, original guys of Looking Glass? Uh, actually, one of them, the drummer, I'm, I'm quite friendly with. Him, and I'm, and I'm in touch with him quite a bit. One of the one of the four guys passed away real early. He passed oh, away back in the early '90s. Uh, Pete Sweeble, who was the other songwriter in the group, um, taken from us very early on. But uh, I am in touch with the drummer uh, Joe Duby quite regularly. In fact, uh, when I, occasionally when I play shows on the East Coast. He comes and he sits in on drums and plays with me when we do that. Oh, so, wow. And I do occasionally speak to the keyboard player as well, not as often as uh, with Doobie, but, but we stay in touch. 
Now, after the time with Looking Glass, it seemed like you had a great career after that. You with uh, uh, 20th Century Fox and everything. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to I had to find a way to make a living. <laughs> and I, I, I was nobody wanted to make records with me anymore, and I had to find a way to make a living. And I was very fortunate in that I found a way to stay involved with music and uh, and make a living at that. And I learned a tremendous amount about uh, filmmaking and uh, and and uh, you know how you use music in movies and. Uh, you know, orchestral underscore and, and things that I didn't really know that much about. Um, I kind of learned on the job, but it was, it was really a pretty, pretty gratifying experience. Now, how did you get started with that? I mean, that seems kind of like a hard job to even get into, but, you know, how did you get started with it? I'm just a lucky guy. Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine, I, I was about, I really, I, I, I was really searching, and I was about to take a job as, uh, as a salesman at a uh, radio shack. Oh, wow. And a friend of mine who was out here in L.A., an old friend of mine from Brooklyn, uh, was a pretty successful TV producer. And he introduced me to an agent, and uh, the agent mentioned music supervision, which I had never heard of that job. Uh, but I knew a person who was quite successful at it, and I called her up constantly, and I said, uh, I'll work for you for nothing if you teach me how to do this job. <laughs> She finally agreed, and I worked for her for, for a while, and then I got hired by 20th Century Fox to do it over there. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, it, it was lucky, and I, 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 somebody introduced me to somebody, and that's how it worked out. Now, did you ever want to actually be in the movie-making process, like a producer or a director, anything of that aspect? I, re I really didn't. I'll tell you... Uh, you know, I was always a music guy, and, and, and making movies... I used to say privately to people when I had that job, I said, you know, I like a good movie as much as the next guy, but, you know, I'm really about records and, and, and that kind of thing. I'm not, not really about movie making. Perfect. So now we do a lot of music uh, for local artists here in the, in the state of Arkansas, and we, when we get people like you come on, we always like to see what, uh, you know, a, you could give them what words of wisdom you could give them since they're started on the music career uh, maybe it would help them down the road well i i think you know i when you contacted me i i, I took a look at, at your website and i think it's very cool by the way that you do that for the local artists i think it's great um if i had any words of wisdom i guess it would be you know stay at it don't let it get you down uh but you know, be honest with yourself. Uh, you know, if you get shot down too many times, you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, well, is this something I really love to do? And am I really any good at it? And if the answers to both of those are yes, then, then keep at it. And I think you got to play for as many people as you can. And I would say that nowadays, one of the good things is you don't necessarily need to be signed to a big record company to have people discover you. You know, there, there are many ways for people to find your music these days without having to sign to a big record company and, you know, go to New York or Los Angeles and find your way. Well, hopefully you start touring next year when all this COVID stops and maybe you can come out here to Arkansas and we'll take you to get some barbecue would, or something. I would hope I would hope so. You know, I was thinking when I when I knew it was going to call you, I was trying to think if I ever played in Arkansas. I couldn't remember, but that doesn't mean I didn't do it because <laughs> because there's a lot of a lot of things I don't remember. <laughs> the seventies uh, wasn't good to you. <laughs> it, 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 it's quite possible that I did play there, but I you know I, I'd have to come there. It's one of the things I like about turning. Yeah, if you come here, we'll take you out some of the best barbecues in the state. People, so oh, yeah. I would love to do that. Oh yeah, you were here. We have videos of it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Re oh, okay. Remember, okay. sweet, yeah. sweet Connie. Uh, where, where, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> well, Elliot, man, we appreciate you taking the time just to chat with us a little bit. Um, you're going to be the cause of many, many divorces because I can't quit singing your song literally every day, fifty times a day, <laughs> and you've been cussed out more times than you even imagine. But, that, but that's all right. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys stay safe, stay well down there. Okay, you take care now, Elliot. It's great hearing from you. Right. Sounds good. Be safe. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye now. There you go. What a guy. Elliot Laurie. And, and he's honest, you know. He's going to go to work at Radio Shack <laughs> after that.
<laughs> and then, uh, you know, then he slapped his way to the top. He doesn't even remember if he's in, in Arkansas. <laughs> that's well, we don't cool. remember if we're in Arkansas. <laughs> but anyway, that's the kind of interviews we do here on www.arkansashowcaseradio.com show. And we got some others coming up here shortly, too. So it's great. Some of these guys are, are legends a long time ago before some of you people were even born. But uh, that's what we try to do because it's kind of a little bit of history for you. Pretty cool. Awesome song. Yeah, but check cool us dude. out. Uh, and check out some of the local artists I, I, I was talking to Elliot about on www. He's on a diet. <laughs> www.arkansashowcaseradio.com show where we play all the best local artists here in the state. And it comes to you 24-7 without any commercial interruptions. Isn't that great? It is. I'm going to go get something to eat. Anyway, that's it. Bye-bye. You guys take care. And uh, tune in to Elliot uh, Laurie. Uh, he's on Facebook. I think he's on one of our friends on Facebook. Yep. And check him out and check out his new music on YouTube. He's got a good voice. He's got a great voice. He's one of the best voices out there. He's most for unique. Us. Yeah, except Brandy. for us. Yeah, but see, I'm playing guitar now, so you know, <laughs> I'm going to be out there pretty soon. We're getting the band back together. Just rip. Just rip, baby. <laughs> anyway, that's it for see now. That. You guys stay tuned, stay safe, and we're out of here. Bye bye. <laughs> I was raised down an old dirt road with the grit in my teeth and the gravel in my throat Put Jesus in my heart and the devil on my mind Working my hands and the belt from my behind Never been the kind to run from nobody I'm a smoking gun I'm the bullet in the air and the fire in the night The blood on your knuckles and the finish to your fight Now I don't mind getting rowdy I don't mind getting loud no, I don't mind getting crazy I don't mind Block engine, she was four wheel drive. Guess we was doing about 95. Blue lights flashed out of my rear view. Small.